Hey, what's going on guys? Let's do this problem right here. The first question is asking an object is placed 100 cm in front of a lens of focal length 20 cm. A second lens is placed 35 cm beyond this first. The second lens having a focal length of 8 cm. If the height of the object is 6 cm, what is the height of the final image? Now let's see how we can figure it out. Now let's draw a sample diagram. So first of all we have an object right here, right? So this is 6 cm and we have lens, the first lens and we have another lens, right? And finally we are going to have an image. Now we want to know the height of this image, right? So first what's going to happen is this will form an this is this object will form an image right here. Then the this image will act as an object for this lens and then this will create a new image. Now in order to do this, in order to find this one out, we have to know the magnification. That's the main thing. And since we are dealing with two lenses, the total magnification is going to be equal to M1 times M2. So magnification of the first lens times magnification of the second lens. Magnification for individual lens can be calculated as like this. Like let's say M. M is equal to the generic formula is minus V over U. Here the V is distance of the image and U is distance of the object. For the first one we have the distance of the object provided that is 100 cm. So we know that this is 100 cm right here. Now using this information let's see how we can figure out the image distance. Because we also have the focal length. So we can find the image distance using this formula that is 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v. So here we know u is a distance of object and v is distance of image. Let's note that one down. u is distance of image, distance of object and uh, v is distance of image. Right? So this is equal to this. Now we are trying to find distance of image for the first one. We are trying to find this distance. To find this one we have to rearrange this equation. Now let's rearrange. So this is 1 over v is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over u. Now let's deal with the first lens. For the first lens image distance. This is the distance we are trying to find. Now to find that let's plug the values. So let's say this is first one and so let's write the equation 1 over v that is 1 over v minus 1 over f f is 20 minus 1 over u that is 100 1 over 100 right u is 100 centimeter f is 20 centimeter so if I take 100 as common denominator this is going to be 5 minus 1 and that's going to be equal to 4 over 100 and that's going to be equal to 1 over 25. Now this is equal to 1 over v and to find the v we have to flip this one and that's going to be equal to 25 centimeter. Right? So this distance is 25 centimeter. Now and also they have mentioned the second lens is placed 35 centimeter beyond the first lens. So we have this lens 45 centimeter right 45 centimeter beyond the first lens now for the second lens this is going to be the object this image is going to be the object so the object distance for the second lens is going to be this distance so here we have 25 and we, here we have 45 so 45 minus 25 this distance is going to be 20 right actually this is 35 right so this is 35 35 minus 25 that's going to be 10 so 10 centimeter is the distance of the object for the second lens so now let's lose let's use the same formula 
So number two, second lens, we have G that is equal to 10 centimeter object distance, 10 centimeter, and focal length is provided that is 8 centimeter. F is equal to 8 centimeter. Now again we are going to use this 1 over V equation to find image distance. So for this one, this is going to be the image. Now we have to know this distance, right? So we are all we are trying to find is V value because we have to know what is the magnification, right? Now let's go ahead and plug the same equation. 1 over V is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over U. 1 over F is going to be 1 over 8 minus 1 over U is going to be 1 over 10. And here if you take a 8 as common denominator, you are going to have 10 right here, minus 8 right here. That's going to give us 2 over 80 and that is 1 over 40. So here we are going to have V is equal to 40 centimeter. Now we have the V for both of the lenses. So first lens we had 25 and second lens we have 40. Now we can calculate the magnification. To calculate magnification as we mentioned right here, total magnification is equal to M1 over M2 and individual magnification is negative V over U. So M is equal to M1 times M2 individual magnification is negative V over U. So for the first lens, negative V is going to be 25, right? 25 is the V and then G value is 100. It's 100 right here. So 100 and for the second lens, we have M2, we have the V value that is 40 and then we have the U value that is, is this is also negative. So U value is 10, right? Now let's see what will happen. So this is going to be 25, 4, and this is going to be 10. 10 over 10, that's equal to 1. And negative or negative, that's going to be positive. So we, will, we get positive 1. So if magnification is 1, this means uh, this, this height is not going to change. The height of the image also going to be 6 cm, right? If the magnification is 1, it's going to be 6 cm. Right, it's not going to change. So we can say the final answer is going to be six centimeter. So that's going to be the height of the image. Now let's look at the second question. The second question is asking, suppose you place your face in front of a concave mirror, which one of the following is true? So if you position yourself between the center of curvature and the focal point of the mirror, you will not be able to see your image. Actually, this statement is correct because the image will be formed behind you, right? So we cannot see the image if it's placed between the focal length and radius of the curvature. So this statement is right. Your image will be diminished in size, not true. No matter where you place yourself, the real image will be formed, not true. Your image will be always be inverted, not true. None of this is true, not true. So this is the answer. So A is going to be the answer for the second question. And that's how we do this kind of problems. I hope you guys find this video helpful. See you next time.